What's up, Taiwan? I'm Rhys Ayers with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. We begin with the latest roundup of action featuring Taiwan's athletes at the Olympic Games. Taiwan's Lin Yuting has shrugged off unwanted attention to win her opening fight in the women's boxing featherweight division. The Asian Games gold medalist scored a decisive 5-0 victory over Uzbekistan's Satora Terdabakova to reach the quarterfinals. Lin, along with fellow boxer Iman Khalif of Algeria, has been subjected to attacks over her gender eligibility despite being cleared to compete. Meanwhile, in badminton, Zhou Tiancheng is out of the men's singles event. He lost his quarterfinal against India's Lakshya Sen by two games to one. And Taiwan's mixed archery team of Lei Qian Ying and Tai Yushun lost a tough match to the South Korean team of Lim Si Hyung and Kim Woo Jin, who went on to win gold against Germany. Lei still has a chance for a medal in the women's individual event. Fans watching Taiwan compete at the Paris Olympics had banners with the word Taiwan snatched away by staff and a fellow spectator. The incident happened during the badminton men's doubles semi-final involving Taiwan's Tokyo Olympic champions Li Yang and Wang Qi Lin. Photos show Olympic staff snatching away a map and a green banner with the word Taiwan on it. Taiwan's representative office in France says that Taiwan's flag is indeed banned at the Games because the country competes under the name Chinese Taipei. But it says there are no clear bans on items with the word Taiwan on them. It says it's in touch with Olympic organizers and hopes that similar items won't be seized in the future. The players Li and Wang won their match and will play in the final, hoping to win back-to-back -back Olympic golds. Kaohsiung in southern Taiwan faced some of the most severe flood damage after Typhoon Kami in late July. The premier has visited the city to see the damage. Tiffany Wong reports. Digging through the rubble, mud and rock from landslides filled this classroom in southern Taiwan over a meter high after Typhoon Kami struck at the end of July. Kaohsiung was badly affected by flooding, and repairs at this school are expected to cost over 600,000 U.S. dollars. The school was in a hard-to-access, mountainous area, and rubble took days to remove. Some pointed to outdated flood prevention procedures for the costly damage. A number of bridges in the area were also damaged, cutting off remote regions that are home to many indigenous people, prompting reminders that local infrastructure needs to be designed to withstand extreme weather events. Damage to schools and roads in Kaohsiung alone is expected to cost nearly 10 million U.S. dollars. Premier Zhou Rongtai said there would be emergency funds for the city's relief efforts and a budget for future flood prevention measures. That says further heavy rainfall can be expected in the months ahead. Dolphin Chen and Tiffany Wong for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's major stock index suffered its biggest ever sell-off on Friday, following on from a rout in U.S. markets. The TIEX dropped by 1,004 points, leaving it almost 11.5% off the all-time high reached in July. That included a 6% drop in the value of chip giant TSMC. Other major tech companies also came under pressure. The sell-off comes after investors began to temper their enthusiasm for the AI industry. Leading players like NVIDIA and Microsoft also performed poorly in U.S. markets. At least six people have been killed and dozens more are missing after floods and landslides in northern India. Intense rainfall triggered the flash floods and landslides in the state of Himachal Pradesh in the western Himalayas. The landslides in the north come days after heavy rain triggered landslides in Kerala in the south of the country. 
The death toll there is over 340, with more than 250 people still missing. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris has secured enough votes from Democratic Party delegates to be their presidential nominee. Harris says she will officially accept the nomination next week after an online voting period ends. The party was quick to rally around Harris as its preferred choice after President Joe Biden announced he would not seek a second term in November. She will be the first woman of color at the top of a major U.S. party ticket. Harris has already breathed new life into a flagging Democratic campaign. She raised more than $300 million in donations in July, more than double that of the Republican candidate Donald Trump. Rioters have attacked police and set a police station on fire in northern England as violence spreads after three children were killed in a knife attack earlier this week. Far-right protesters clashed with police in the northeast city of Sunderland. Anti-immigrant activists are preparing to hold dozens more rallies this weekend. A number of anti-racism counter-protests are also planned. The violence follows a knife attack at a Taylor Swift-themed dance workshop in the northwest town of Southport. Misinformation on the internet claimed the suspect was a radical Islamist migrant. A 17-year-old who was born in Britain has been charged with murdering three girls and 10 counts of attempted murder. Here in Taiwan, a team of sign language instructors has opened a summer camp for children. Here, they learn both how to protect themselves and how to appreciate deaf culture. John Van Trieste has this story. This summer, sign language instructor and women's rights activist Zheng Xinyi has thrown herself into a special project. She's brought together 26 hearing children and four deaf or hearing impaired children together for a sign language summer camp with a purpose. Over three days, the children learn important life lessons through stories, both narrated aloud and interpreted into sign language. In this case, a story based on Ms. Zheng's own story of sexual assault. The lesson is how children can protect themselves. The camp's founder says lessons like this are especially important for students who are either deaf or have limited hearing. But this is just one of the lessons this camp hopes to teach its young participants. One of the most important things teachers hope kids will walk away with is an appreciation of sign language and deaf culture in general. Joseph Wu and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's National Human Rights Commission has agreed with a complaint that uniforms for female flight attendants constitute gender discrimination. The Taoyuan Flight Attendants Union filed the complaint with the commission last year. For most airlines in Taiwan, female flight attendants are required to wear skirts, heels and makeup. The complaint said this is time-consuming, restrictive and opens women to sexual harassment. The union also said uniforms may also be life-threatening because flight attendants train for emergencies wearing pants and sneakers. The Human Rights Commission agreed that the different standards for male and female flight attendants are unfair to women. It says the government should come up with guidelines on gender equity and workplace safety for national airlines. At the height of summer in Taiwan, the country marks the start of Ghost Month when spirits of the dead are said to re-enter the world of the living. It's a time of year that brings with it a long list of taboos and superstitions. I went down to a local temple to find out more. We're at the start of the seventh month of the lunar calendar and beginning tonight for the rest of the month, the gates to the underworld are due to spill open, allowing the dead to roam the world of the living once again. No, it's not Halloween, but ghost month in Taiwan an annual observance where restless spirits, among them vengeful hungry ghosts, are believed to wander the land in search of food, fun 
and for the malevolent ones, an unwary soul to snare. In a culture where ancestor worship and respect for the dead is a big deal, Ghost Month brings with it a long list of taboos based on not causing offence to the visiting spectres. Things to avoid doing during Ghost Month include hanging out your laundry at nighttime, leaning up against walls, singing or whistling after dark, going swimming, getting your hair cut, moving house, or even getting married. Oh, and if you feel someone tap you on the shoulder, don't turn around. The list goes on. But do folks here really subscribe to these beliefs? Whether or not people believe in the superstitions of Ghost Month, going to the temple to pray or bye bye is still a common practice in Taiwan throughout the year and across generations. And here at this temple in Taipei, Xingtian Temple, people gather to get blessings from the gods and to ward off any invisible guests who might have taken a liking to them during the month of ghosts. Ryan Wu and Reese is in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Performance groups from Taiwan are set to take the stage at the Cultural Olympiad held alongside the Summer Games in Paris. Our reporter Sandy Chi met one band to learn how they'll bring a taste of Taiwan to the world. Performing with a mix of languages, instruments and musical styles. The span is telling the tales of some of Taiwan's biggest legends. This is Avroot, a band from Taiwan established in 2015. They'll perform at the Cultural Olympiad this summer in Paris, where 120 artists from Taiwan will showcase the country's artistic talent to the world. Avroot's forte, telling folk tales with music. 台湾其实本来就有非常多丰富的民间传说跟妖怪的故事，但是我们好像那时候发现比较少人用，而在传统戏曲界很多，可是用相对比较流行的方式去呈现，好像比较少。Telling stories through music is not easy, especially when combining very different elements. 在创作的过程里面，把多方的想法整合聚焦在一起。然后要说什么样的故事，我觉得这件事情从发想到执行上是相对来说比较困难的。Over the years, A Root has attracted many fans with their unique performances. Some have gone above and beyond, attending almost all their shows in Taiwan. 让我们更了解台湾的一些，我们原本根本就不听、没有听过的传统故事，然后更认识台湾的文化。比起现在很多流行歌来说，它有一种文化传承的意涵，所以我非常的喜欢这样。It may be a bit difficult to understand Avery's stories, as they're told in several languages, like Mandarin, Taiwanese, Hakka, English, and Japanese. But that doesn't stop people from enjoying the music. 因为我觉得音乐就是不分语言，虽然我们用了很多语言，但其实音乐本身就是一种语言。With their unique vibe and captivating performances, the band is helping bring Taiwan's traditional stories to a new generation. Alex Chen and Sunny Chi for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Finally, enjoy these images of fans buying up Olympic Olympic mascot merchandise. I'm Reese Ayers, take care and see you next time.